everybody, Morgan with the Vin Answer here, and today I want to show you how to put together this wood hexagon backdrop. With some simple greenery and the clean lines of the hexagon shape, this backdrop fits for all kinds of different themes of events. Whether you're having a wedding, a special event, or even just a party, this will fit in a lot of different ways. So follow along and I'll show you how to make this. I made a quick run out to my local hardware store and picked up these 1x4 inch pine boards that are 8 foot long and for this whole project I ended up using 7 of them. Now you could absolutely use some hardwoods for this and they would look really beautiful but for cost reasons I decided to go with the select level of pine to assemble all my hexagons. The most critical step you're going to do in this entire project is setting your miter saw to 30 degrees. You want to slow down and make sure you get a really accurate measurement here because all of the pieces are going to be cut with this one saw set to this degree. This project is made up of tons of repetitive cuts and to help make that easier I've set up a stop block at the right side of my miter saw and what this is going to measure is the longest side of that piece of wood is always going to be facing up and pressing against the corner of my stop block. And this is going to help me get really consistent measurements. Even if my measurement is wrong, at least all of the hexagons will be that same measurement. So I set this once and then cut all of the hexagons in one size before moving on to the next set. And here are the measurements that I use to make my hexagons. Now you could absolutely use a calculator of some kind if you wanted different sizes, but I found that these three worked really well together since they're in six inch increments. And for my design, I ended up using four 18 inch hexagons, seven 12 inch hexagons, and six six inch hexagons. And once I had all of those cut in all of the different sizes, uh, it made a pretty impressive stack. So once all the cuts were made, I moved over to sanding. With the appropriate safety equipment, I'm all suited up to do a bunch of sanding here. So I'm just using a random orbital sander with I think 120, and I'm gonna sand all of the short sides on all the pieces. And this is because once you assemble the hexagon, it's gonna be extraordinarily difficult to sand the inside of that hexagon. So I'm gonna go ahead, pre-sand everything before I start gluing up. For the glue up process, I'm going to lay down some wax paper to protect my surface and then take some masking tape and place it on the tabletop sticky side up and secure both ends of that really taut. Now I only had one inch on hand so I did two strips it right next to each other but two inch would work a lot better and give you strength because this is going to replace the clamps to assemble all the hexagons. I then took the first side of my hexagon and with the short side facing up, I centered it along my tape and just pressed it in place. And then taking the next piece, I butted it right up against the edge and made sure that they were flush with each other and pressed them down. And you're just going to repeat this with all six pieces, making sure there's a really tight connection between them so there's no gaps. And then we're going to glue this all up. So every side is going to get a little bit of glue and I'm using a foam brush to just spread it out to get some good coverage. And once everything is covered, including both ends, then I pulled the tape free from the table and started rolling up the sides of the hexagon. And the tape is also going to help hold the hexagon together as you do this. And once you've got the two ends touching and making sure they're aligned, secure the tape nice and taut so everything stays tightly together. I then laid it flat on the table so I could press it and make sure everything lined up on the edges. And then if you do get any glue squeeze out, take a damp paper towel and make sure you clean that up because it may be difficult to sand or scrape out later, especially on the inside of the hexagon. And then you're just going to set this aside to dry and repeat for all the hexagons. I came out the next day to check on all of the pieces and some of them weren't cut 100% perfect or didn't glue together super perfect so I'm just going to take a little bit of wood filler and fill in any gaps that there may be in joints or if there was a spot my wood had gotten a little ding in it. Now's the time to go through and fix all of those mars and then set that aside for about 15 minutes to dry and then I'm going to come back and sand all the hexagons including the front, the back, and the outsides. And I would encourage you, as you go through every step of building these hexagons, do all the hexagons in all the different sizes at the same time. Batching like that will make this process go a lot faster. And now we get to see the hexagons laid out in all their glory. Ahead of time, I had sketched out a design that I'm going to follow for all of my hexagons, and that's the pattern that I'm following on the floor here. And I'm going to break up my pattern into three sections, so blue, green and red and I'm going to assemble those together in those sections and that'll make it much easier to transport instead of trying to transport this ginormous thing all as one piece. 
And then when I get on site, I just have to drill a couple screws to assemble this whole thing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is number all of my hexagons following the numbers on my drawing here. And that way if somehow they get separated while I'm working on this, I know which side is up and which numbered hexagon it is. And this also helps me, um, cause sometimes I did have to rotate a hexagon just to get a nice perfect fit to continue to know which side was up. With all the hexagons laying flat on the floor, that will make sure that all the front sides are flush once this is assembled. But to make sure that this is gonna stand straight, I'm taking this scrap piece of wood and clamping the bottom three hexagons together. And that piece of wood is gonna stand in for what will eventually be the floor of the venue. And that'll just make sure this stands straight and doesn't end up being crooked in a weird way. Any side of a hexagon that's touching another hexagon, I'm gonna be securing with two screws on my large hexagons and one screw into the tiniest hexagon. And so I'm just measuring out where those will be placed in an equal distance in the middle of the board. I'm also thinking about which side of the board I'm drilling my hole into. Because I don't want the screw heads to be very visible, I'm making sure I'm drilling through on what will be the underside of as many angles as possible. So when you're standing in front of this backdrop, you shouldn't be able to see most of the screws because they'll be on the underside of the hexagons. I'm using inch and a quarter construction screws in all of my holes, but I know a lot of designs that I've seen online, they actually end up using nuts and bolts. And if you are planning to assemble and disassemble this multiple times as a backdrop, you may wanna go that route, but I knew I'd only be assembling this a couple times before I end up pulling this apart and repurposing it into different shelves and things like that. And I just didn't want large holes in the wood uh, cause I find that the screws will be easier to hide later on. And then I'm just gonna repeat all these steps for my first section. So that's my four largest hexagons and those two tiny hexagons are gonna make up the first section of this design. The joint where these two large hexagons and this medium sized hexagon meet is actually where two sections are going to join. So I'm going to mark and pre-drill this, but I'm not going to screw these together yet. I'll wait until I get to the venue and then screw these all together and stand it upright in place. The final piece to make is the hexagon base. So this hexagon is 42 inches wide and 48 inches point to point, and that will line up exactly with the base size of my hexagon backdrop. Now I drew out the hexagon using the help of a website, which I'll link below to help me figure out the size. And I just laid down some masking tape and used a Sharpie across that for all my measurements. The masking tape is going to help prevent blowout on the plywood because it does tend to want to rip up and I wanted to keep this edge kind of nice so I'm just going along with my jigsaw, cut out all six sides of it and then using my combination square I'm going to come back and make a mark 10 and a half inches in from the edge and this is the same size as the side of my largest hexagons. So when the backdrop is sitting on this base my two lowest hexagons are going to line up perfectly. I'm just relaying my line down on top of some masking tape to protect the wood again. And then I took a large drill bit and drilled a hole a little ways away from my line on the inside. And this is gonna give me a spot to start my jigsaw. So I'm just gonna pop that down into the hole and then follow my line all the way down the side until I get to the corner, cut straight into the corner, and then I'm gonna back up a little bit and curve around until I'm about an inch past the corner, just like this. And then I'm gonna come from the other direction, drop my jigsaw down into that hole again, and then cut straight into the corner. With the final cut made, the center comes free, and I'm just gonna clean this all up with a little bit of sanding on the front and the sides. Now for this project, I don't mind the look of the raw edges of the plywood, but you could always paint the base of this or come back with some edge banding for a really nice finished look. Now let's get everything set up for a party. 
So I'm going to take all the pieces and lay them out in order again and everywhere where my sections connect I'm just going to put those screws in real quick and then stand this up. Now when you go to stand this up it works a lot better if you have two people team lifting this because uh, it is a lot of pressure on some of those joints if you're lifting from one spot. So once you get it upright sit it right on top of the base hexagon make sure it's centered and then I'm just going to drill in two screws in each hexagon to hold it in place and we're ready to start decorating this thing. I love the look of just simple greenery on top of the light wood. So I have some faux greenery here that I'm going to be hanging on to the hexagons, but I also have this awesome Boston fern down in the corner. And if ever you're decorating a space and need something that takes some volume and has some real visual oomph, I highly suggest ferns. They are wonderful, they travel well, easy to take care of, and add a lot of bang for your buck. today's project inspirational. Hexagons are such a versatile shape and design right now for events and in home decor and that's what I love about this. You know if you use this for an event or a wedding you could disassemble this and use this for other setups or parties but I'm planning to take this down and hang some of these hexagons on my wall as a shelf. So not only does this serve the purpose of the decoration but it can be functional once you're done with it. If you enjoyed today's project, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. We make all kinds of party decorations, setups, and tutorials to help you plan awesome parties. And so if you wanna check into that and join our creative community, I'd love to have you join. Uh, until the next time, you can check out some videos over here. And until then, stay creative.